live from the Mandalay Bay Convention Center in Las Vegas. It's the Cube covering VMworld 2016. Brought to you by VMware and its ecosystem sponsors. Now, here are your hosts, John Furrier and John Walls. You're on. Okay, welcome back, everyone. We are here live in VMworld 2016. This is the Cube SiliconANGLE's flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, my host John Walls. This segment is the host. We're here with Michael Anderson, director of IT at PGA Tour Superstore. If you've ever seen them, they're huge. They're great destinations. And Michael Boone, vice president, and general manager of IT stores at Compliance Point, uh, VAR for the solution for the with Veeam. Welcome to the Cube, guys. Thank you. Thank you. So, first of all, I'm a golf fan. Love golf. John is. I know John is too. Um, the superstores are, you, you know, in my town, Palo Alto, East Palo Alto. There's a big Best Buy it's a destination. These stores are very popular, and they're very big, very destination-based. How many stores do you have? Give us a quick overview of the, the operation. Sure. How big, how many people, what's it look like, and what's the IT makeup of it? What's, you know, what goes on? Sure. So we've got uh, 26 stores, um, all the way from the East Coast to the West Coast, all the way from the down South, all the way up North, um, even in markets like Minnetonka and Minnesota that you might not think of, but it's a big golf market. So. Um, Big thing for our stores is we've got each store has 45 or 50,000 square feet. A few that are a little bit smaller, but um, from a technology standpoint, kind of do the same thing in every store with um, custom fitting is a big thing for us. So we have um, between six and eight golf simulators, and then another you know five or six practice bays, so customers can come in and actually um, hit golf balls like they would on a driving range, but they can do it using technology and um, you know record their swings and all that kind of good stuff. Um, it's a total immersion though, you have club, grip repair, oh yeah. all kinds of apparel, so it's like basically it's a golfer's destination, right? That's what we, we're trying to make it the <laughs> mecca for golfers, right? So you, you got a hook proof driver, I assume? I wish. I do too, <laughs> I do too. It's in the works. So 26 stores, mm -hmm. and big e-commerce site as sure. well. So you, you got that, you know, there's a challenge there, and then your expansion plans, trying to grow problems there. I mean, how is Compliance Point trying to help you address that so that you can grow and then be online 24-7, 365 days a year? So the, the, the great thing for us is having partners like these guys is when we're trying to grow the way we are, we're trying to keep you know, a relatively small IT staff um, to keep up with everything that's going on in the IT world and trying to keep pace as we need guys like them that can you know, do a lot of the legwork for us and we can go to them and say, hey, here's a challenge that we have. Um, we need a solution for it and they can help us um, either recommend one that already is out there that we just haven't seen yet or they can help us kind of go through the process of finding what would be the best like we did here with Veeam and um, kind of you know, do the whole RFP process and you know, find the best solution. So. So, so what is the problem? I mean, what are the challenges that you're facing? Trying to grow your business, you know, take it from medium to, to bigger? If you will, uh, is it is it about protecting you know identity identity verification or data protection or financial transactions or what is it? It's it's all of those things. I mean, as you've seen in the news with you know some other retailers who have lost millions and millions of dollars with you know having credit card numbers stolen. So we've got compliance things we have to deal with 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 there. We've got. You know, we we've always want to make sure we can, you know, help our customers and, you know, take payment at the point of sale system. We can, you know, fit our customers. We can, you know, uh, we do a special order process. We've got to be able to transmit all those orders out to our vendors so the clubs can get ordered. Um, we've got inventory that we've got to keep up with all the time. So as we grow, and then on top of that, you still have the e-commerce site that's international. So it's got to be a, you know, a 24-7 thing. It's got to be up all the time. We've got... Um, you know, our customers at the office, we've got, you know, finance and, and operations and merchandising, all of them expect, you know, close to 24 seven uptime of all the systems so that they can access it any time that they need it. So it's, I mean, all, everything you can think you of. You got your hands full with the business. You got to have a great store and then the consumer mm -hmm. expectations are much higher now. I mean, you mentioned the stores are, are, are well equipped with that uh, kind of, you know, consumer focus. But now if you look at things like the Levi Stadium app at, uh, in San Francisco, the fan experience, the consumer experience, is mm -hmm. goes beyond the store. So you guys got to start thinking about that. Any thoughts there? Well, that's, you know, we actually, a few of the things we've seen here at, you know, VMworld we've been looking at were things that kind of go to that. Um, the whole customer experience thing for us is a big thing, being able to take, you go into our store, you, you take a golf lesson, being able to go pull that lesson up on your phone, 
right? Being able to go pull all your fitting specs up on your phone. Hey, you come in one spring and, you know, you don't remember how you regripped your clubs last spring. Being able to go pull that data up and say, hey, I did it last year. I had success that way. I need to redo it. Here's exactly what I want to be able to do. So all of those things are, are very important for our future. Personalization. Exactly. That kind of thing. Mm-hmm. So, Michael Boone, first off, how much better is your game now than it was before you started working with these guys? Well, they, they work us pretty hard, so I think my game's gotten worse. Well, well that's probably uh, a good sign for them. It can't then. be good. That means you're not working. Exactly. Right? Exactly. That's the old so trick. If it got better, I wouldn't admit to it. So what um, are the pain just tank points? tank the 17th hole. That's what I do. Yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, so what are, you, what are you looking at in terms of when you evaluate their processes and you're looking at, at their plans? What are you looking at? Because yeah, you guys look through different prisms, I assume. Yes, we do. You're ev- evaluating your offering, and so somewhere you got to crunch that data. Right, so. and, and I think what, what's worked very successfully in our relationship is we don't just work in those silos that you just described. So when there is a technical need from the PGA Tour Superstore, um, we really work on that need jointly. Um, so it's not a case of they have a problem, we present three solutions, and they pick one. Um, we actually go in together, jointly identify what the objectives are, what are the business requirements, and we go at it together. And, and honestly, I wish that all of my customer relationships were this way um, because I think the end result comes out a lot better. So it is a true partnership. When they have a need, we, we attack well, it together. giving you guys the keys to the kingdom, exactly. basically. We're so given the you're operationally to do that. tied in with their, yes. you've got a vested interest if they Absolutely. <laughs> it's bad. And it's, it boils down to trust, yeah. right? Can you trust your partner? Can you trust your customer? And, and do we have each other's uh, you know, the outcome in mind. Well, it's in, in a way, it's, it's a perfect situation. You guys need help. You can provide not only that trust and operational partnership, right. but agility because the landscape of vendors and things that are going on are so crazy. You know, just right. to kind of survey the landscape of what launched this week is going to be, right. take right. some work. So, like, right. you got to run the business on your end. Right. <laughs> and what we try to bring to the table is the fact that we just, we don't only work with golf-related retailers. How many are there, right? Yeah. So we work in other verticals. We do a lot with healthcare and some other verticals. And, you know, we're exposed to a lot of technology and a lot of solutions that fit similar problems. So we try to bring that experience to the table and, and really help these guys in their growth trajectory. So talk about the IT transformation at PGA stores, Superstores, because, you know, the IT guys are taking a much more prominent role. You have a great partnership on the back end with, with the compliance point to make sure that all the, the T's are crossed and I's dotted and all things with IT in terms of the tech acquisition and deployment. But there's a whole other level of thinking that's going on in the IT world. It's like you're under a lot of pressure to drive the business outcome, not just run stuff, but you have to think about revenue. What kind of conversations do you guys have with, with that? You know, go out to the courses more, get tied into the events. Does the PGA help you guys out on the other side? Can you share some insight into what goes on in the yeah, PGA mean, Sausage Factory, as we, as we say? <laughs> yeah, I mean, for, for us, I mean, it's most everything's driven by what our customers are demanding. And um, as I like to say, is our customers are twofold. I mean, there's the paying customers in the store. There's the customers, you know, in the office, right? There's the store associates in our stores. But we listen to what they say. And with you know the the big drive now with personalizations being the big thing is that's what we want so now it's not just how do we maintain the systems that we have it's how do we have the infrastructure in place that lets us from a bandwidth standpoint from a you know just a servers and and storage and all of those things how do we have all those things in place to meet the growing demands but also meet the demands that we maybe don't even know about yet right because we have to put things in now i can't go and rip everything out and put new stuff in every year so it has to be how do i build now for what i may need you four or five years down the road as they say right. well, what kind of storage you guys have give us a little lay of the land take a little peek inside the uh, uh, it environment you have storage sure. what kind of storage you guys have so we we have this year we put in the uh, hp3 parsan which we kind of replaced our old eva um, so that's what we put in this year that most of our most of our infrastructure is hp stuff um, we use their blade systems, and then we have the three par on the back end. Um, then we use VMware for the vast majority of our servers. So we basically take, I think we've got, what, 16 blades that we've turned into a little over 100 servers at our data center. Um, then we now use Veeam is what we use for all our backup and replication stuff. So that's kind of the data center um, infrastructure that's that where we the have. compliance stuff really comes down to it, right? Yeah. Having stuff available. And how does Veeam fit in there, just on backup replication? Well, so, so we had some great success. Like Michael mentioned, it was, it was an HPE three-par storage replacement project. We also came in and made the decision to integrate HPE store once, storage appliance. And in speaking with HPE and Veeam and the two of us, you know, we really determined there was some special sauce that Veeam brought to the table 
with that combination of, of hardware in place. Um, and after having done that, Veeam really was able to prove that we can get tremendous performance, um, ridiculous deduplication ratios, like they're getting 25 to 1 on deduplication. Nice. Um, so you talk about being efficient. Well, three that, parts got some good scale. So, that, that's so an is, incredible this, is this metric. a success story of Veeam, HPE, and VMware? Yes. Mm -hmm. So three of those guys? Yes. And Well, yeah, Veeam and HP and, and VMware. It's a great so, success story. Absolutely. So what's been the big aha for you in terms of what's happened over the past couple of years? And think, you know, when was it that maybe you hit something that it, where it hit and it turned the corner and you said, well, this, this is a big find. You know, this, is, uh, this was worth our time and our investment. Well, if you, if you just take this project alone, right, I mean, you start looking at, we're looking at backup windows where it's taking us, you know, in a day plus to get all of our backups done. If you just use backups as the example, where we put this we put this solution in and backup windows take one take one particular server, take our email backups. If I wanted to run a, a full backup of my email systems, it was taking 24, 30 hours, something like that at times, where now it's down to within an hour or two. Um, so it's it, those, believe it or not, I mean, the last week you kind of have aha moments of some things that we can do now that we couldn't do in the past with we were just discussing it today was taking backing up file shares for our finance group. They're making changes to files all the time. Well, now we can we can back up that stuff on, you know, hourly, if not, if not less time. So if they say, hey, I need to recover a file. Okay, well, in the past we'd have to go a day, two, three days, maybe even a week back. Now I can go back to, oh, well, you need it. You made the change, you know, at 945. Here I can give you 9 a.m.'s file, and, and, and they're losing so little work. So it's those kind of things are really big, big wins for us. So what is it for me? If I come online and I'm, I'm going to buy, you know, a couple of dozen golf balls and maybe a new driver, whatever I'm going to buy, um, I mean, how is this affecting my experience sure. and making it better for me in the shopping area and the transaction area? And what if I don't buy and I come back and, and I mean how much better off am I at the end of the day than sure, I so would have been before? So our website alone has seen a lot of improvement. Um, the, the majority of it is because of the, the new three-part SAN. Um, the performance we get out of it is, is tremendous but the other thing it gives us is it really gives us a lot of ability to be dynamic and that we can make changes to the website and with a little bit less risk in that if we have to roll something back, if, we've, if we have to, you know, heaven forbid something really, really bad happens, we can recover really, really quickly, so our uptime is much better. But again, the performance on the site, take, take a simple thing like searching on the website. If you, if you went and searched on our website today versus six months ago, it's a drastic improvement in how quick the, re the search returns happen, which only increases conversion rate, which increases sales, obviously. So that's Fast of the searches, as Google says, that's right. best of the money gets printed. All right, so I've got to ask you guys, are you guys assuming you're both golfers? Yes. All right, so here's the, here's the question. Where's the craziest place you've played golf? Crazy. This is a trick question because the word crazy is, and it could be anyone's definition of crazy. I'll say for me it was Brussels, Belgium. And describe what was crazy about it. Uh, the courses are a lot tighter there. They don't have the kind of real estate we have here in the United States. And uh, I'll say that the Belgian people are a, a lot more wild on the course than we are. Well, they are. Wild as in, like, loud back wild. to blue skis? Or? Loud and other imbibements and you know it's it's a totally different experience it's i know the europeans actually play music on the cards yes it's not they, as it's not as reserved as we like to do it here in the united states so, so when that, you go out of bounds you actually hit a tree in or and you <laughs> not a tree in a house or you a out of quite often <laughs> <laughs> at least i did those 15 so. yard fairways they just yeah, it was very michael narrow. what about you ah for me i don't know if it's really anywhere that crazy but you know down in in statesboro georgia where i went to college the old goat track we used to play on out there that i don't know i mean it's not that expensive, so you've got, you got, you know, every Tom, Dick, and Harry's out there playing golf with his with his cooler full of beer, and you, you never know what you're going to find. The guy's going to be passed out on the third or fourth green. Who knows what's going to happen? Playing with, so. He's playing with three clubs. <laughs> a brawl on the fifth hole on the backup tee. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Uh, who's going to who's going to steal whose golf ball? Who knows? <laughs> That's right. What's a lot yours? of great stuff. John, what's yours? Uh, you know. It's hard to say. I mean, I, I love Pebble Beach. The craziest time I, I ever golfed was um, I was golfing at Pebble Beach, and I just got this new camera with the SD card in it, and I gave the guy a $100 caddy to t film my round, but you had to shoot it, like, in shots. And I didn't know what, I didn't know what to do with the, the video, so I uploaded this new site called YouTube. 
no one's ever heard of YouTube. They just got launched, so I just upload all the video. Turns out that YouTube became YouTube, and like I have zillions of views of me on the 18th hole. <laughs> <laughs> Shaking. Well, I hope it. you part it. Huh? I mean, I hope you part. Oh, uh, well, no, I had a nice drive right next to the tree in the middle there. Yeah. It was a beautiful day. It was a crazy day, but the fact that the upload got all the traffic and all and the comments on YouTube. Oh, br- brutal, probably. Yeah, like brutal. Nice it's, oh, yeah, don't subject yourself oh, to that. the comments are entertaining in and it's of great itself. great for your ego. Yeah, uh, it no, it's not when you read the comments. You're <laughs> <laughs> kidding me. Um, how about you? Uh, well, I mean, you talk about Goat Ranch. There's one in, in Tulsa, Oklahoma that we call the Goat Ranch. Uh, but I, I love Haynes Point in Washington, D.C. Because you go down there, it's not crazy, but it's just such a cross-section of Americana. You go out there to the driving range, and, you, and everybody's knocking back beers, and you see lawyers next to custodians, next to teachers, next to whomever, and it's just a great cross-section of America. You go down there any night of the week, and it's a little slice of America. I love it. So anyway. Dave Vellante's course, one of the guys on the course has a house, and he actually put his kid through college this way. And it's a refrigerator that's always full of cold beer. And he leaves it as an open t- the tip jar. And it's Love like it. on the back nine. And it's like way out, like the 12th hole. <laughs> and he just gets cash stuffed into the tip jar. Well, in a way, the, the PGA Superstore is just like Dave's refrigerator. It is always open 24-7, <laughs> round the clock. So be sure to give him all the business you possibly can. Fellas, thanks for being with us. We appreciate the time. Absolutely. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank yeah. you. We continue here on theCUBE from VMworld right after this. Excellent.